today was due to be the day that the GEA introduced their revised roadmap for the return to play, the safe return to play of all activity. They might have been waking up yesterday morning, planning today, thinking, God, we've dodged a bullet to a certain extent with the Dublin situation one week ago that there wasn't a whole pile of political pressure or political outrage about the photos emerging from Inish Falls GEA club and we can get on with things. But the Irish Independent this morning might have changed that on the front and on the back of the newspaper they are reporting about a latest breach from an inter-county squad it is Monaghan allegedly this time Garda probe into video of Monaghan GEA training session is the front of the independent and the back page is GEA vow to investigate claims of Farney breach so Minister for Justice Helen McEntee was sent photos and videos allegedly of a training session taking place at the end of March before the Dublin training session and involving more players in the Dublin training session 25 players and staff uh, staff I say coaching uh, people uh, in total so it's a bigger group it happened before Dublin and it happened at Cordoff GEA Club according to the allegations that are reported this morning Shane Hannan of Monaghan joins us this morning uh, are you shocked and appalled by what your uh, county men have uh, have done to the roadmap Shane? Morning Owen uh, yeah it's a strange one look it's when you see headlines like this it's 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 embarrassing uh, you know you look at your own counties day by day COVID figures and you know Monaghan have been doing quite well in recent uh, recent weeks having been one of the worst counties affected so you take a little bit of pride when you see your county doing quite well and helping to do their part but when you see uh, your county involved in something like this it's um, it's a bit embarrassing and it's frustrating I think as well for, for I guess you know the other GEA counties and clubs maybe who are taking this seriously and who are genuinely not training at the moment um, so to see this headline is a bit is a bit frustrating today um, and, and look it was, it was never going to be the Monaghan GEA Centre of Excellence that these lads were training at that's just off the end too um, and it's actually being used as a, as a COVID testing centre here in Monaghan at the moment but yeah Cardiff Cardiff Gales is kind of this hidden little hamlet close to Carrick Macross in South Monaghan and um, this alleged breach that uh, has been brought to the attention of the Minister for Justice is um, is just going to set the GEA's return back I mean the April 19th has been mentioned Larry McCarthy was on Red FM a number of days ago and he was asked I think by um, Valerie Wheeler you know what would another breach mean and, and he said well it just would not be good uh, and I guess the general consensus is that another breach would lead to perhaps a delay to the April 19th return so this is bad news generally. The April 19th return according to Monaghan GA chairman Declan Flanagan is something that they have abided by now he's come out and said the whole thing is news to me and that the county had been holding fast before that April 19th return date. The, the Independent actually uh, carry a statement from him, um, like they basically de denying it really, and de well, denying any knowledge of this happening. Uh, he says, if it is of a Monaghan training session, I'm not aware of it because we have been holding fast and going back to training, the Monaghan County Board have. And as far as I'm concerned, Monaghan GEA are not doing any training. And I'll tell you, there is very little activity on any pitch in Monaghan. So he's basically coming out and, and almost going as far as denying these. And we should say that they are allegations. We don't have photographic proof published in a national newspaper this morning, but it's undoubtedly a, a, a massive story here, Shane. And, and if there is uh, photographic proof, maybe this explodes into, into something bigger if it's out in the public domain, but there's no guarantee that that happens because this is being investigated privately. They're uh, in the hands of, of the Gardaí at this point. Uh, according to the piece, that's where Helen McAtee has uh, passed uh, the photos and video footage on. She received a dossier and it's gone to, to the Gardaí. They will be investigating this like uh, on a number of different levels. The the, the, the five kilometre rule breach, uh, as, as much as some people will disagree with that entire rule, does that come into fines that will be handed down to Monaghan? These are things that, that will have to be seen. Like overall, again, the same thing goes to this time last week which is the the act of people training in a pitch maybe isn't that egregious it's just the fact that GEA people feel that they don't need to abide by the rules sometimes and, and that is the, the image problem that I felt would become a massive problem as a result of Dublin last week and to be honest with you I think that they actually not, not got by un, unharmed or, or unscathed from it but I was certainly confident that the revised roadmap that was going to be rolled out today was going to be a little bit undisturbed by what had happened last week. However, another story coming out on the day of this roadmap coming out, I think that that puts the brakes on it a little bit or it has a chance of putting the brakes on it a little bit, which would be hugely disappointing for everyone. 
Yeah, and I think like I'm going to be very interested to see the reaction to this story today. A lot of people are upset that outdoor sport hasn't started in the country yet. Uh, but having said that, the numbers involved here in this alleged breach is that uh, it's actually more than 25 people, uh, according to the report, um, whether that's players, coaches, whatever. Um, and, uh, you know, if it's if it emerges that this was a, a an organised Monaghan training session organised by the manager, Seamus McEnany, then they need to come down hard. Monaghan GA need to come down uh, very hard on him. Um, you know, Dublin set the precedent here with a 12-week ban for Desi Farrell. Uh, so if it's proven that this was the case and the video and... Um, images of this training session are corroborated, then 100% Seamus McEnany needs to be banned for, for three months um, at a minimum because this is this is a, an embarrassing an embarrassing breach. And it's something that a lot of people are talking about social solidarity at the moment. That seems to be one of the, the, the couple of the buzzwords going around. And this, this is a slap in the face to it. This is, uh, you know, the impact this is going to have on people. It's not the fact that Monaghan GA allegedly had a training session. It's, it's that other people are going to look on and go, well, those lads are training. Why can't I meet three or four of my mates? Do you know? Um, it, it's That's the impact that I'm worried about. That's the impact that, that I was worried about after the Dublin GA story. Do you know, we're in the camera phone age, Owen, and for any county to think that there wasn't a strong chance that they'd be caught training, especially with a group of more, quote, more than 25, um, that's a bit ridiculous. They're always going to get caught. There's always going to be someone. Um, and look, it's cut off GA pitch. It's, it's Seamus McEnany's home club, uh, as everyone knows. So this is this is a story that, that was undoubtedly going to come out. And the GEA are going to be absolutely fuming this morning. And, and you know, to see Declan Flanagan's comments from Monaghan GEA, one of his quotes was, I'll tell you, there is very little activity on any pitch in Monaghan. Well, the point is, Declan, there's supposed to be no activity on any pitch in Monaghan. Um, so there needs to be a strong and immediate response from the GEA. There needs to be a strong and immediate response for Monaghan GEA as well. It was Dublin that, that slapped the 12-week ban on, on Desi Farrell. That was for nine players meeting up. This is uh, an, an organised session, it appears, allegedly, of uh, more than 25 people. So maybe it needs to be more than a 12-week ban for Seamus McEnany um, for this message to be hammered home to other counties. So uh, I think they need to come down hard and fast on Monaghan. This needs to be punished, and it needs to be punished quick. They're still investigating the Dublin situation, and I wonder, does this complicate that investigation a little bit because while the Dublin situation is maybe a bigger story because of the fact that they're possibly the, the most famous bunch of Gaelic footballers to have ever laced boots this is arguably if the allegations are true to be a, a worse story than Dublin with, with, with 25 players just optics wise it looks worse there was the phrase ah the Dublin situation was only lads kicking a ball around a park I think I used that phrase myself last mm -hmm. week uh, which you can get by with now in fairness there was a trainer with them you can't really say it's lads kicking around a ball in a park when they've got an actual coach with them and it's very organised so that, that was probably a, a little bit uh, of a lackadaisical term on my part to, to kind of throw that around but you can't really say that about more than 25 players slash management at a, at a GEA park in this case no, so I, like, yeah, I can tell you for a fact that, that 25 members of the Monaghan uh, senior panel do not live within 5 kilometres of Cardiff uh, 20, I don't know if 25 people live within 5 kilometres of Cardiff um, but it, it's one of those um, it's one of those incidents like I remember reading an interview with, with uh, Seamus McEnany I think it was towards the middle of February and look he was he was I guess speaking his frustration and venting his frustration at the fact that uh, you know GA wasn't returning quicker than he hoped and he's probably looking on at at you know the the league the upcoming league Monaghan were in you know due to be in a group with Donegal Tyrone and Armagh he probably is fully aware that Tyrone and Armagh situation is different um you know the vaccine situation in the north is rolling out much faster than here as we know so he probably wanted to get a march on on those player on those teams and and have the man and players conditioned right, but there's no excuse for it. Players can get conditioned by themselves. Uh, the situation is the, is is the same for all other counties in the Republic of Ireland, and it's one of those situations where you just have to be patient. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other counties being patient. Eamon Fitzmaurice was was quoted on the Irish Examiner podcast as we spoke about during uh, earlier during the week that he thinks that uh, he's fairly sure Kerry haven't haven't returned as one example uh, to training. So. Uh, counties need to be patient here. They need to hold firm. Um, and according to this report in the in the Irish Independent this morning, allegedly Monaghan haven't been holding firm. And um, so uh, this response needs to be fast, Owen. And it's just you can understand frustration of of managers. They want to get out with their players. They're sick of the Zoom sessions. They're sick of these, uh, you know, sending them their their individual, um, I guess, regimes that they have to to complete and send back by video or whatever. 
we understand that, but that's not the point. It's the same for everyone. Um, you know, Donny Buckley now is involved as the as the Monaghan senior coach. So if if Banty gets a ban, I'm sure he'll have to take the training himself, um, as he would. You'd, you'd expect he would be anyway. But it's it's just it's frustrating. You you see, like this is this is one of those stories that you, you just hoped wouldn't emerge between the Dublin story and today, the date that the GA were supposed to announce their their I guess their fixtures plan for the for the upcoming months and. It's it's happened. So Larry McCarthy is going to be tearing his hair out, I think, this morning. Yeah, no, it's it is terrible timing for them, and it'll be interesting to see what actually happens. And it, like, it'd be interested to know where the Dublin investigation is at the moment, because in many ways, I kind of have up, of the opinion that the twelve week ban handed to Desi Farrell sort of snookers the GEA in a way. Like, what more can they do if they've already dished out similar bans to Cork and Down management? That maybe the smartest course of action here for Monaghan would be to get out in front of it and give that 12-week ban to, to Seamus McEnany and, and, and move on, or hope to move on, is what I should say. So it'll be interesting to see if the Dublin and Monaghan scenarios now are met with uh, a greater frown from Crow Park than, say, the, the Down and Cork situations. It's going to be something we're going to be covering here across the morning. We'd love to hear your thoughts. You can tweet us at Off the Ball or comment on the YouTube stream as ever if you want to get in touch. Uh, Neil Tracy at 7.42 this morning. How are you getting on? 